I don't know what to do with this because these are like side slip bangs. I don't know if I really like enjoy it as much as I hoped I would. I personally think this brand is amazing and um, hauls quite frankly could never. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I love hauls too. I think that's a better thing for her because sometimes you just need a dog. You don't need a man. You need a dog. My shadows today I'm going to be giving you a review of a book called August and Everything After by Jennifer Salvador Dorvosky, I think, or Doktorsky. I'm going to be doing a reading vlog for the first time. But basically I've only read one chapter of this book and that was weeks ago, so now I'm on chapter two. And my first impressions of the book is that it's gonna be interesting. Basically, I am going to be giving you guys a review with spoilers in it, but for those of you that have not read this book, I'm going to give you a quick disclaimer in case you are considering picking it up. It does include heavy language. It also includes some sensitive material related to suicide and self-harming and depression and things of the like. And it also involves things like a traumatic accident because there's two people with tragedies that have happened to them and it's going to be like both of them trying to find a way to get past those tragedies, I guess, with each other. And also, it has reference psychics in the book. It doesn't go any further than that, but it's important that I let you guys know all of these things because it could put you off of the book. I'm really curious to see how things go with Quinn being in her new town and, you know, wearing her ugly grandma cat eye glasses and stuff like that, which I, I did cat eye glasses on my floor. What are you talking about? So, for those of you that have not read it, I'm going to tell you guys to you you know, dip <laughs> right now because I'm going to be giving the spoiler version of the book. Um, in the background I have Mario Party 7 playing. It's a long play. I just like having things in the background and then I'm also going to be playing, you know, music when I read. So it's Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Aquatic Mind, Extended Mix. So I'm going to just like see how this goes. I'll probably read, speed through it, and then give my thoughts or like edit to the point where I'm giving you my thoughts on each chapter, hopefully, or like the chapters that really have something happening in them that's important. So, the glasses go back on now that the intro is done. <laughs> oh my goodness. And actually, today I forgot to say, like, today's March 10th, 2019. Sunday. We actually just got back from Captain Marvel not too long ago. Well, actually a while ago now. So I was wearing my Captain Marvel shirt and everything which was like, yes. So it is currently 3.02 a.m. <laughs> not abnormal for me to be up at that hour, honestly. Like I said, I read the first chapter like weeks ago. So I forgot that Quinn had a best friend that died. And that's like obviously a huge Point. I'm trying to think of when it was mentioned. It was, oh, best friend Lynn died when they were 15. Okay, so I was like, <laughs> I forgot about that because in chapter two it mentioned is like, best friend had recently died and I wasn't thinking. So I was like, wait, what? I was sort of like, I was shook for a moment. Yes, I said shook. But, anywho, back to reading. So this book basically follows a girl named Quinn Gallo. I never knew how to pronounce it. I thought of Galileo. And I had just read a book with a character named Quinn. I think I read two with characters named Quinn. And now, now I'm reading another one. Like, what is going on? It follows a girl named Quinn Gallo who moves to New Jersey after a scandal that occurs with a teacher that she actually was kind of sort of romantically involved with. I think it was a student music teacher. She moves here to try to start a new life over the summer. She wears these glasses that are like cat eye glasses that are her grandma's and they're apparently very, very ugly. Like they are toe up from the flow up. So she is trying to mask this kind of identity, create this new facade for herself. So she wears these things. She works two jobs. She lives with her aunt over the summer, and her aunt is actually someone that was formerly 
like on the music scene a bit. Like she has love for music. She was involved with a musician that had a band and everything. Her aunt's a librarian currently with tats, you know. And she is living with her. She's required to read, I think, uh, books on her list throughout the summer that she's staying here. And at the same time, she has her own room. She's good on that front. I just want to talk about like chapter two I just finished. I actually did get a sneak peek of chapter three because I looked on the other page because I do that sometimes. I either look on the other page in advance or I like look ahead in advance just to see if it gets interesting, if it's at a, you know, a not so interesting part. But I have to say, this story just got like it just cemented that it's an interesting story and it's gonna be a good story. Like it just made that very clear. She works at Keegan's and one night a guy that's performing there he walks up behind her, looks behind her glasses, which I didn't even think about now, wow, word. Um, she looks like through her glasses and like comments on them or something like that and says she has pretty eyes, blah blah blah. She's like, what are you doing all up in my space? And he eventually takes the stage. She realizes this person's Malcolm Trent and he is a musician who lost his bandmates in a van accident or something like that. So there's only him and this other survivor member named Travis, if I have that name straight. There's like a Travis, there was a Trent, there was a... There's too many T names. Basically in this chapter, she talks about how her, like her relationship with her co-worker Liam, um, about his twin sister, about his girlfriend, and how like, he wasn't as bad as he seemed. I actually really dug Liam. He was really cool. Liam also has a girlfriend named Kiki. And he, Kiki is actually really cool with Quinn too, and they actually kind of have a little bit of friendship. And Liam is actually a guitarist that's really, really awesome. He convinces Quinn to be like, yo, Malcolm, like, let us into the band. Like, we'll always be more than a band. Let me name out. She talks about, like, Malcolm performing and the build up to it in, like, in the performance, and then he gets to a song that just triggers a memory she has of how her best friend died. This then sends Quinn into an anxiety attack so she has to take Xanax because it causes flashbacks to you know the accident that her friend Lynn died in. And that's chapter two. And then also this year I've been on a trend where I've been reading a lot of books where a character died without even gravitating towards that on purpose. Like The Last Wish of Sasha Kate, The Best Friend, is a book I read where the mom dies, where the sister died, where you know, in all these different situations, and it's just like, why? <laughs> this seems like a really interesting book, and actually I mentioned how she coped, and she would like basically get into these relationships that were just very detrimental to her. So he actually meets her at Beck, and they talk, they connect over, she spills these things to him. She didn't tell him like how Lynn died yet, but she does like open up to him in this regard. They eventually strike up this kind of whirlwind romance where they both are kind of caught up in each other really, really quickly. So that's one of the things I took issue with in the book is how quickly and how, you know, how quickly it came and how quickly it burned out and it kind of felt like insta love and all that stuff. I kind of understood it to an extent because she had issues before with like, you know, always having this infatuation with guys very easily. You know, he was like looking for kind of like a fix, you know what I'm saying? Like he was addicted to drugs as well and it kind of felt like he was trying to look for someone to fill the void of the drugs he can no longer take. She basically gave up her virginity to someone that was not, you know, really a reliable person and then she got into friends with benefits relationship with an exchange student and that went south and then she had the fling with the band teacher which began she plays the drums which is like <laughs> drum line is that you she plays the drums which is really dope i didn't know it would be like this i didn't know this book would include like a band or something like that that's so cool like i love bands especially electric guitars and drums and all that they eventually do become bandmates. They start practicing in Malcolm's garage. You know, Quinn and him start seeing each other, blah, blah, blah. They spend a lot of nights together in the house that his parents are planning to sell. And things really kick off. However, there's many things that happen that put their relationship on hold and eventually kill it. Hey guys, um, I'm picking up with this reading vlog. It's the same video, so it is... What day is it? It is the 19th of... March right now on Tuesday so basically the last time I talked to you guys was the 10th I think when we saw Captain Marvel. A lot of days have gone by since I last made like an update on 
you know my reading progress so I actually am on page 129 which is chapter 22 so I'm right here in the book class I'm right here so on page 22 you really be a drug mule or something but like really though it's like you are holding on to something for someone that's advice for them and she's like the classic oh I need to tell auntie this but I'll tell her later like obviously we know this is gonna be foreshadowing that you're not gonna end up telling her and then it's gonna come out in a way you don't want it to and then it's gonna be a complete disaster that's one of the issues and the other issue is that she's holding on to the pills for him and then also I really appreciate the fact that Liam is her best friend or whatever and he's a guy and he's not you know secretly into her and she's not secretly into him like I really appreciate that aspect because that's something you don't really see often in YA is a best friend as a guy that is not pining after the main character and vice versa so that's really really good that's my thoughts on this thus far that's my updates in the reading vlog so hopefully i'll pick up when i'm either further along or when i'm at the end of it and i'll give you guys my thoughts so there's different things like his old bandmate the survived thing comes around offers him a beer even though he's a recovering addict and you know the stress of the studio he said got to him and everything but it's also like you don't have it you know under control so that also put a strain on them that's what actually really made the break between them is the dynamic shift of introducing him and how they both just kind of like had a rift because of that okay so it's actually march 25th now and um i hadn't read when i last updated and i'm still recovering but i was like trying to just like get through more of this book because I'm not I don't know if I really like enjoy it as much as I hoped I would but I do want to get through more of it so I can see if I it'll, it'll pick up and just see what happens I'm actually on page 130 right now her aunt is explaining what went down with her and Caleb I hope it's really gonna be interesting because right now I'm just like not really feeling this book I don't know if it's because I haven't been reading it much recently so I'm disconnected from it or or if it's just I don't like the book I don't know yet so I figured I'd do like a little cough drop haul for you guys while I'm reading all this and everything after so I'm using the Ricola cough drops that are actually I think honey flavored and they're really helpful and soothing for the throat I personally think this brand is amazing hauls quite frankly could never <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love Halls too. They also don't like give me negative reviews of books, so I also don't like to like talk about books that I don't really enjoy or books that I didn't finish. So we'll see. If this if I liked it enough, this video will actually be up. Including my cough drop haul. The Fisher never really truly gets healed over. They do break up. I know I'm jumping ahead, but they do break up in the end. And I actually personally was hoping they would not stay together and that was my expectation. I'm reading this and it's like the aunt just revealed that she stayed back while Caleb went to tour with a band and promote it while she dealt with an unplanned pregnancy and I'm like Ooh Man Dang, this is rough to- Dude, this- this book has a lot of heavy topics in it. There's like... Man. I would say if you have anything going on, or anything you've dealt with in the past that's hard, like, just be careful about going to this book, because... I'm not trying to give spoilers, but there's like... There's quite a bit. Mm. Okay, so we're seeing how Quinn and her aunt's life mirror one another more. Sorry, I really wanted to say that. And also, when um, she made a comment before about, I know I'm not a mother, early in the story, I was like, I thought it was just because, I thought it was because she was unable to conceive, but it's now because of the fact, we now know it's because of the fact that she miscarried, the baby she ha was going to have with Caleb. The thing that gets me, though, is that she didn't tell them, like, and then it says, like, the first time in 20 years is when she talked to him about a job for Quinn. So that means you haven't told him in the 20 years that you had, you almost had his child. Like, ugh. Oh my gosh. This is a, yeah, this is a doozy. I'm not going to give it updates, like, for every chapter, but, like, that was a pivotal moment. That was very, very integral to the story, so. 
I decided to let you guys know how I feel. I'm on page, well, I just finished with page 150, so technically I'm not. Um, 150 is half of the 300, so I'm halfway through. I'm on chapter 25 right now, which is actually a perfect number to me. This is 25. I don't know. I think of half of 50. I don't know. Um, she basically revealed what happened with Lynn and how she died and everything. It wasn't exactly what I expected, but it was, it was pretty... It's a, it's a realistic thing that happens. I feel like a lot of times you see a character that dies and it's just like, it's common, it's tropey, so it kind of strips it of its emotional appeal. She came up with parts for the last that last night and I actually have a theory that song's gonna actually mean more than, it's gonna transcend their shared grief. What that song was about initially, it's gonna be their last night together probably at the end of the story, I'm, that's my thought is gonna also mean more than that. It's gonna be their song. She actually gave him some notes on the, that last night, which was very hard for her, but she actually makes the song come together more alive and more vibrantly than ever before. And she offers a lot of valuable insight to the sound of the album. The album eventually is called Cat's Eye, named after her, and it's taken a picture of the view that they like to look at when the sun rose and everything. And their relationship did come to an end she didn't go on tour with him in the end, but at the same time, I'm very glad. Like I said, I'm very glad it turned out that way. I've currently got my talented gelato southern butter pecan, which I love. Almost any form butter pecan comes in. Like, I love it. haagen Publix, any of that. Um, I'm actually currently further along than when I picked, than I updated last time. I'm actually on page, um, 188. So, I mean, I'm almost, like, I'm... I'm further along than it was. You can tell by this indentation in the book. I'm further along. Her relationship with her mother and her sister were very, very weird as far as, like, her, her mom, you know, she and... They were both, like, very, very icy towards each other. And then it kind of got wrapped up a little bit quick when she found out she was blaming herself for Lynn's death. And I just thought that it was a little bit weird that she was just one... She was, like, day and night between those two times and it could be kind of like okay it's understandable because she kind of put walls up there's misconceptions Kimmy needs it okay <laughs> I just think that the character development happened in rapid succession her aunt and Caleb who is the owner of the club that gives Quinn the job who were involved before it also kind of was just like it felt like a little bit rushed to kind of put them back together after so many years apart even though they live in the same area right so I thought some of the pacing was weird, and I thought some of the character development was weird. Okay, I was thinking that she might end up with Andrew, because it was like, she never saw him till the end of the book, and I just thought maybe he'd be the one. And so, it's not it's like official, but it alludes to the potential for the relationship to happen. I'm glad she didn't go on tour with Malcolm. I'm glad that they went their separate ways. Um, I'm glad that Caleb and her aunt give each other another chance, basically. And I'm also glad that her mom and her reconciled and she had her redemption arc. <laughs> it actually turned out pretty decent. It took me like a month to get through, but I really did find certain moments I enjoyed. And actually it's 300 pages by the way. Um, the author's note, it was mentioned that there was the acknowledgments. There's the acknowledgments where it mentions that Ricky was a real person. And I was like, oh dang, that hurts to hear. I finished August and everything after. This is the after of August. <laughs> she also made amends kind of with her, with Lynn's parents. And, you know, they revealed to her that it wasn't her fault. And she was able to be... What's the word? She was able to be absolved of a large amount of the guilt. And she's kind of like, you know, carving out a new path as hopefully a sound engineer in the future and going to school. And it's just incredible. If I were to rate this right now off the top of my head, and I rate it in pocky sticks, taking into account things I liked, things I didn't, I would say maybe 3.5 pocky sticks. I think. 3.5. If I'm thinking off the top of my head without really, like, 
analyzing it or like think it through. I like to also read reviews to see if anyone shared my opinions on things before I pick the next book. Let's go ahead and look through some reviews, okay? And add it to my have been read books, which I think is my eighth book of 2019, which is awesome. And that's new for me because I usually had, or at least years before, I hadn't read that much. August. Let's show you guys over here. August and everything. Love Goodreads so much. Everything after. There we go. I finally officially read it, which is awesome. My, my last read was Follow You Back before that. The average rating is a three and a half. It says, okay, I read this book for different reasons. Huge book slump, okay, and blah blah blah. So they said it felt flat because it's kind of consumed by romance forced and rushed okay so that's something i agreed on was the you know how the romance was like very quick and it kind of felt like insta love it was very very fast and i understood to an extent but it kind of felt too fast love loss forgiveness finding yourself new friendships breakups flashbacks blah 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 yeah can connect to the characters okay yeah i felt that too it can connect to anyone but to quinn to like a certain aspect of what she's dealt with but otherwise i didn't connect to them either but I don't want to really focus on the negative. I'm just basically like, you know, I wasn't sure if I was alone in having thought that it kind of fell a little bit flat for me, which is why it took me so long to get through it. If you guys are curious of the books that I actually read this year thus far, I actually read starting from the start of me and you on January 3rd, How to Breathe Underwater, January 29th, One Small Thing, February 5th, Last Wish of Sasha Cade, February 15th, as far as like when I finished it, How We Roll, February 17th, Follow me back March 3rd, and then August and everything after April 2nd, which I started like a day after Follow Me Back. So it took me straight up almost a month to finish it. But anyway, let's go pick out my next book, and then I'm gonna end things. So this is going to the pile where the library books go. Gotta go in back. Okay. So these are the books I'm considering for the next one. So some of them I talked about in my bookshelf tour, but there's some new ones on here too. I'm just like, okay, what am I most excited about right now? And that clothes in the back, I'm just like, ooh. Um, <laughs> if I can read this upside down, that would be amazing. Okay, so I want to say right now, least looking forward to to this one so I'll shelf that for later these three for my next book so I really really feel like when I absolutely want to go for I'd say this I feel like this is too similar to what I just read with like the musician type of thing even though it's kind of different I've had this on my shelf for longer though I feel like I should try it or not like at this point I've had it forever it feels like I've been renewing it and checking it back out so I should probably just read it yep Okay, I think taste test might be next, but I need to probably read this because I've had it for a long time. Say No to the Bro by Kat Helgeson. Helgeson. It says All's Fair in Prom and War, which is about a prom bowl, and I hopefully will enjoy it a lot. Alright, so for those of you that obviously have read it, I want to talk about it in the comment section because I actually noticed certain things and I wasn't sure that other people shared in those opinions until I read some reviews on Goodreads. I enjoy the music aspects, I liked some of the romance, I liked some of the humor, but I overall didn't really enjoy the book as much as you guys saw in my reading vlog. And I don't like to give reviews on stuff that I'm not really 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 raving about, but I did want to give a review after I, you know, did a reading vlog. She wasn't great on the kit like when she first got it, she's getting better and better as she goes. And she actually has a career future, a future in sound engineering. She's been one of the few female sound engineers in the field. And I just thought it was awesome that she was a drummer that was a female. Like, I thought that was, like, not very often that you hear something like that. One of the things that I did, like, that struck a chord with me was basically how Quinn was, like, self-punishing, basically. Because I've done that in the past. So it's just, like, that was the only part for me that was really, truly, like, evocative for me. Um, it takes... It can take a lot to me for me to be emotional about what I read or what I watch, unless it's This Is Us, but... <laughs> and it's just also really sad, like, what happened with Lynn. Like, honestly, it's it's one of those things that's like, dang, you know, 
it's like you could blame yourself for that it's not fair and it's not possible for you to carry the weight if you have blamed yourself for someone's death like that's a level that's beyond anything else it's tricky because it's like okay she felt like she was at fault because Lynn originally wanted to go to the library she was like let's race our bikes down this hill or whatever and she told her it was safe to go but you know uh, a person hit Lynn and then it's later revealed by Lynn's mom yo like this lady was texting and driving and she was not looking she didn't hit her brakes she ran a red light and then collided with Lynn and it's just like Quinn's blamed herself since that happened which was I think since when she was 16 or something does it say since at least you know like three years prior that's a lot to carry that's a lot to shoulder and it's just like whew. That's where it's heavy too, as well as, you know, Malcolm losing his bandmates, like three of his bandmates. It's very, very painful as well because of the fact that that's actually happened in real life with a group that I love. And it's just, those are the two things that, like, did um, evoke emotion because of the fact that it's like, yo, yeah, because it's, it's a thing that actually happens. So I really did appreciate that about the book. I know I didn't talk enough about the positives of the book. I liked all the little technical things of the recording studio and like I recognize certain things because I've been looking up, looking into music. I'm more familiar with like the film industry terms, but I really like learning about the music industry too. Also, I left out a part where they also volunteer at the shelter. They look after dogs and they actually adopt a dog, which is awesome. And now I'm like... I think I have dog hair on me right now, so you know I'm down for it. And it's this chihuahua named Reggie who is actually apparently possibly deaf and because they can't hear like Quinn's drumming or when the aunt arrives or anything like that. And it's this dog they take in and it's just like, oh, okay, that part's cute. Okay. And then, like I said, and I don't, I don't know if I can stress this enough, the fact that Quinn and Malcolm did not end up together is an amazing thing that also hardly ever happens in YA where the two leads don't end up together even though they had an involvement with each other. So that was something I also really appreciated about this book that sets it apart from the rest. Anyway, I'll see y'all next time. Bye guys and smiles all around.